Hello friends, welcome to my channel. I am Komal Kamal Shekhawat and I hope you all are doing good and keeping safe. I create videos on how to do data analysis and econometric analysis using various softwares with SPSS, eViews, Stata and R. So if you are new to my channel, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. So in this video, I'm going to discuss what is vector autoregressive model and how to run vector autoregressive model in eViews. Okay, so first of all, the MOR model is used for multivariate time series. And the structure of war model is such that each variable is a function of the past legs of itself and past legs of other variables. And hence, the war models predict the bidirectional relationships, unlike ARIMA models, which are unidirectional models. And ARIMA models are used for univariate time series. Okay, so war model is used to predict the relationship that affects each other two time and the predictions by the model are dependent on the past values okay so before running the var model in eviews or running var model in any software some of the basic assumptions that you need to ensure are the first one is the error term has a conditional mean of zero and the series and all the variables in the model should be stationary either its level or at first difference and there should be no perfect multicollinearity in the model and the random terms are white noise disturbances okay okay so now let's see how we can run the bar model in eviews for a time series data so first of all you need to input your file in eviews and so you can see i have imported my data file and there are total 50 observations and I'm dealing with only two variables over here. And one of the variable is exports and the other one is GDP. Okay, so we can also have a look at the data. So this is the data for exports and GDP. Now to run the bar model, you need to first select all your concerned variables and open these variables as more okay so you can see over here this dialog box will appear in front of you and you will see endogenous variables box wherein you need to mention all your endogenous variables okay so before putting your endogenous variables you need to be ensured that whether your variable is stationary at level or it is stationary at first difference okay so i have already checked the unit root of the variables and both these variables are stationary at first difference okay so here in the endogenous variable box you need to write the variable is first difference if your variables are stationary at first difference okay so once i have mention that both the variables are stationary at first difference and the second one is lag intervals for endogenous so you need to mention over here the lag length so it by default the lag length is taken as one two so first i will proceed with the same and in the exogenous variables c here is for the constant and if there is any dummy variable in your model, you can also mention the dummy variable in this exogenous variable box. Okay. And in the var type, I'm dealing with the standard var model. After selecting all these specifications, you need to click on OK. So you will see over here, these are the results for your vector autoregression estimates. And the standard errors are mentioned in parentheses and t statistics is in square bracket okay so since the lag length was for two legs so you will see over here exports for leg one and exports for leg two similarly you will see gdp for leg one and gdp for leg two and c for the constant okay apart from this the output also gives the result for R square adjusted R square F statistic and standard error. Okay. 
Now we need to ensure that or we want to follow a specific criteria for the appropriate leg length selection. So for that, you need to go to view and then leg structure and then select leg length criteria. Okay. And uh, in the leg length criteria, the legs to be included are as default mentioned four. Okay. So you can proceed with four or five. Let's say I'm dealing with five legs to be included. Once you have selected the leg length, you need to click on OK. All right. So you will see over here various leg length criteria are mentioned, like a kayak information criteria, squats criteria, hand and queen criteria. The mostly followed one is the AIC, a kayak information criteria. Okay. And AIC suggests leg lengths to be included are five. Okay. This asterisk mark. With the leg length selection criteria shows how much leg lengths need to be included in the model. Okay, so AIC suggests five lengths, right? So once you have found out the leg lengths as per the AIC criteria, you need to again run your model following five lengths. Okay, so you need to go to estimate. And here in the leg intervals for endogenous variables, you need to mention five, right? So once you have specified leg length to be five, click OK. All right, so you will see over here now, both the variables are shown for leg one, two, three, four, and five. And similarly for the other series, that is GDP. GDP leg one, two, three, four, and five, right? Now, how do we interpret the results for bar model? So, as I mentioned earlier, bar model is used to predict the relationship that affects each other two time. So, this T statistics value in the square bracket reports the result, right? So, the T statistics value for 5% level of significance is 1.96. So, if this value is less than 1.96, then the variable at lag 1 or lag 2 is insignificant. And if this value is greater than 1.96 T statistics, then that variable is significant at that lag length. Okay, so we can see that if this value is, for example, here you can see it is greater than 1.96, no matter it is positive or negative. So this exports at lag 2 is significant because it is greater than 1.96. However, for the long run association, the Granger causality test is followed and for the co-integration between the variables, various co-integration methods are followed. So to know how to run the Granger causality test and co-integration test, I have already uploaded videos on all these tests and I'm also attaching the link for the same in the description box. So do follow those videos also and do watch those videos once you have watched the video on vector autoregression estimates, right? So I hope you like the video. Please hit the like button and please share the video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.